Welcome to Reality of Faith and Wisdom. My name is Yuri, and today we are talking about the glasses that we see our life with, or how we see the life truly, how we interpret the life. Now, uh, when, I, uh, when I was a boy, I grew up in uh, Ukraine. I was born in Ukraine, and so I grew up in, U- in Ukraine. Part of my youth, I grew up in Ukraine. And uh, I've uh, interpreted, that was my own interpretation, uh, I interpret uh, things about United States of America. Because if you live in a different country, in a foreign co- country, I mean, uh, most of the foreign countries back in the 80s, you know, thought that uh, uh, in United States, there is, uh, there's dollars uh, grow on trees, and that everybody is rich, and uh, it's uh, heaven on earth. Uh, there is no, uh, there is opportunity in all these things. And and to some of to some extent it's true there is opportunity in the united states you can be whoever you wanted to uh, or go after the goals that you wanted to go after and uh, if you want to be the businessman or you can go go after it. It, it to some of it that interpretation is true but i also realized that United States is full of problems, just like every other country. There's many homelesses here. There's many struggling people that are living here in the United States, uh, pe- people who are going through all kinds of different things. And so when, when I came here in 1998, I realized that to some extent, the interpretation of my childhood was true, but a lot of it was false. And so a lot of times we look at life and not a lot of times, let me correct myself. I, I, I'm, I'm going to say a hundred percent of the time, all of you, everybody who's watching, you have glasses on and, and the glasses and you interpret your life through the past experience. You interpret your life through trauma that you've had. You interpret your life and you see people through different hangups that you've encountered in your life. Addictions, maybe fears, trust. Just because maybe you have a trust issue and somebody has hurt you in the past, maybe multiple people, now you started to think that everybody else is exactly the same way. Just because uh, you encountered fear and you accepted that fear, now you think maybe everybody is is living the way you're living. And so a lot of times we interpret the life through the bank accounts that we have and through the the traumas that we go through and on and on and on. But I also realize that just because you see things the way you see it, that doesn't mean that everybody sees the same thing. And just because you're struggling with something, that doesn't mean everybody else has struggled with what you struggle. And and just because somebody have a power to say no and somebody have the power to say yes, that you might not have it, it, it doesn't mean that everybody else sees what you see and struggling with what you struggle. Now, but everybody going through different struggles, everybody using little different methods and approach to life, And everybody sees things through interpretation of their past. Now, I love a couple of quotes. I'm going to read a few quotes to you. I don't know who who, uh, wrote them, but but few that I I truly love. What screws up, what screws us up most in life is the picture in our head of how it's supposed to be. That's the most uh, (laughs) things that really truly screw us up because we think it should go this way. It should go like this. And just because we have these thoughts in our mind, that's that's how we experience also failure because some things are not failure in life. Just because some things didn't go the way you want it to go, that doesn't mean it's a failure. That doesn't mean it's, that's it, the life is ending, but it's all the way we perceive things. The next quote, I love this, is that we don't see things as they are, we see them as we are. So we truly see things as we are on on the inside. If you change the way you look at things, the things you look at, change. Let me read this again. If you change the way you look at things, the things you look at change. 
I realized, and I'm 40 years old, I realized that the things that used to bring fear into my life don't because I changed the way I looked at it. I changed the way I approached it. I changed the way and changed my knowledge about certain things. Right. If you never changed the spare tire, if if uh, if you never changed the tire in the car ever, and now you have a, you know, maybe you went over the the nail or something, and you have a flat tire, it, it's it's fear. It's how am I going to lift the car up? How am I going to take the wheel out? How, it, it's first of it. It's it's just the way you see it. It's 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 maybe through the fear, through never did it before, through oh my gosh, even if I do it, will it? Can, will I get home right? But once you did it once, you started to you started to change the way you look at it. Oh, okay, it's not a big deal. Let's cut a couple of bolts. You get a jet jackhammer. You 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 bring the car up. You change it. You go to the shop, and some of you guys already have the kit inside. You know that you can just just plug. Find the I, I carry it in, in in my car. You you pull the nail out, you plug it, and and you pump it up. And some of you guys have little air compressors in the car. So again, it's always how we see things and how we prepare, how 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 our understanding are towards different areas of life. Now, and that's why I really love and understand even more um, clearer why we need this one word salvation because every one of us because of every one of us see things through our own broken lens salvation in jesus when we come before jesus and say lord jesus i want to start over please forgive me for my past i want you to be the savior of my life and salvation brings this equality i love this 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 new platform and what salvation does is now you have understanding that everyone sinned that everyone is on the same platform everyone everyone is a sinner some sin greatly some sin little less some made some big mistakes some made smaller mistakes but now we understand that we have all sinned and that we have all fallen short and now you start again <clears throat> but here's where we make the biggest is mistake in life the biggest mistake in life we get to this moment of salvation we go through experience of salvation we give our life to jesus we say lord jesus i want to start again and then we say i'm saved and it maybe sounds good and amazing and what you experienced was great because your testimony your salvation your moment is something that nobody can tell you no nobody can say it's it's just it's it's fake no it's my own experience i know god but but how i i've experienced god how i felt God, how I understood God, how it brought me new life, how it changed my life. And oh, no, 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 no. Now, but a lot or most of us, we get to this salvation. We say, well, I'm good. Let me show you a different step and something that a lot of people, when I say a lot, if I put a number to it, and this is not from statistics or anything like that, but I would say close to 70 or maybe in some case, 90% of people, they never take this next step that I'm about to share it with you. Now, and it's recorded in Philippians chapter 3, verse 10. It says this, I want to know Christ and experience the mighty power that raised him from the dead. I want to suffer with him, sharing in death, so that one way or another I will experience the resurrection from the dead. He says that our life is not only here, but eternal. It's in heaven. And and he says this, I don't mean to say that I have already achieved these things or that I have already reached perfection. No, dear brothers and sisters, I have not achieved it, but I focus on one thing. Forgetting the past and looking past and looking forward to what lies ahead, I press on to reach the end of the race that that and receive the heavenly prize for which God, through Jesus Christ, is calling us. 
Even though he says this one thing and he, fra- and he fra- phrases it in, in one sentence, when Paul writes this to Philippians, he says actually three things in this sentence. He says, I am forgetting the past, number one. I am looking forward to what lies ahead, number two. And I am pressing on to reach the end. I'm pressing on. Why did he say pressing on? Because it's going to be hard. It's going to take some time. It's going to take some patience. It's going to take some some power. And and it's going to take sometimes, whether you feel it or not, it's going to take some perseverance. Now, let me, let me just pause here for just a second. He says, now, he starts this, I want to know Christ and experience the mighty power that raised him from the dead. He's not just saying, well, now I got to know Christ and I'm saved. That He says, I want to experience the mighty power that raised him from the dead. Think about it. It's the same power that got Jesus from the cross and, and from death and from hell back to life. It's the same power that, bre- that that gave him life and it's the breath of God. It, it is the same it is the same moment when when God breathed into to Adam. It's the same it's through the the power of God. It's the same power of God. He says, "I want to experience. I want to know Christ and I want to experience that power." And in order to experience that power, he says, "This is what I'm doing." And he's saying forgetting the past now, it's almost impossible through science, right, uh, to, to forget the past. We, we don't have a button to push and say, well, I'm done with my past. I'm done. Mm, erased. I'm new. No, the past is there. That's why he sa- he's saying forgetting. I am forgetting. I am I'm putting distance from the past. I am taking off my glasses of my own interpretation through trauma, through past, and through, through all, all these things that I've experienced. And Lord, I'm setting it aside. I'm trying to forget it. I'm trying to, not, not just trying, but I'm doing something. I'm making a step towards forgetting the past i am maybe it's maybe i need i need to step away from friends that in that 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 were in my past to to maybe places that i used to go that uh, so frequently i have to completely reshape my life and start it new i'm forgetting the past i'm taking off the glasses now, when you take off the glasses, and sometimes those, those people that, 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 that wears, wears glasses all the time, and especially if you need, need to see in short distances, when you take off glasses, things become blurry, right? And so <clears throat> he's not only saying, I'm just forgetting, and now it's, I don't know where to go. Now he's saying, I'm putting on new glasses, and I'm looking forward to what lies ahead. That means, Lord, I'm going to seek you. I'm going to seek your word. I'm going to seek not only the power of God, but I'm going to want and I want to understand what you have for me. The purpose, the future, the calling, your calling, peace, joy. I now I'm putting new glasses on and I want to find out what you have for me. And that's the, that's that word seeking. It is, it is continuation. It's moving forward. It's not just, uh, yes, Lord, I'm seeking you. Um, it's, I'm going to do something about this life. I'm going to fast if I have to. I'm going to pray as long as I, I need, I need to. I'm going to read the Bible and, and carve some time. I'm going to put new glasses of understanding and I wanted to clearly see not, not through my, own interpretation of life and past trauma and experience but now through the lens of Jesus Christ and then he says in the same sentence and now I am pressing on to reach the end you see the end is truly the beginning the end is not the end because for us who believe in Jesus and his mighty power it is the beginning I'm pressing on to reach the end so my beginning can start with eternity. And you know what? Every single day, you have to start with the same attitude. This is the day that the Lord has made. And this is a new opportunity for me to forget the past, to create a new environment in my life, to truly look forward to what lies ahead and press on to reach the end. Now, the next question is this. Is now, Lord, 
What do you want me to focus on from now on? When we get to this moment of salvation and you truly understand these three things, then you ask this question to Jesus. Jesus, I want to live a new life. I want to see the way you see and help me to focus from now on on the things that you want me to focus. And that means action. That means I'm going to do something about my life. My approach will change. The way I see things will change. And I'm going to live a new life. Next week, we're going, we're going to go into part two of this, of this, this beginning of this salvation moment of from salvation to forgetting the past, to looking forward to what lies ahead and to pressing on. And now the next chapter is what are we to do next? God bless you. And I can't wait to see you on the next podcast. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine on you, be gracious to you, turn his face towards you and give you his mighty peace.